So I would welcome Mr. Sandeep Tandon, MD and CEO, Quant Capital. And I welcome, sir. Uh, we all are excited to hear from you on a very interesting topic, and that is the uh, significance of dynamic asset allocation in volatile markets. This is again a very interesting interesting topic for all of us isn't here from the financial services industry and uh, mutual fund distributors ifas and all our fraternity once again i welcome you on behalf of fm india thank you dimple good afternoon friends so definitely we all live in a very dynamic environment and we have seen how global market has becoming very volatile very interesting okay so that's a uh, thought process which i am going to talk about how dynamic style of investment is need of the hours okay globally also if you look at the concept of dynamic management money management is picking up and all the traditional money manager which was there they don't figure in top 10 right now okay and so it's a very clear indication that the traditional tools approaches which the money management used to deploy is changing very fast all the concept of strategic allocation or tactical allocation has been re getting replaced by the concept of adaptive asset allocation so we we also as a mutual fund we also practice about our own thing about adaptive asset allocation how the in a very simple terms if i have to showcase that how environment can be adopted that really help us in taking a big call because see it's not like in today people can talk about on bottom up approach and i look at only few sector select stock you know irrespective of the market condition okay uh, the alpha can be generated but if you look at the way volatile market has been globally in fact uh, i would like to share a small presentation to give you some perspective how we look at these markets and for, for us is very vital to understand what environment we are operating okay then only your strategy will generate alpha otherwise you have seen right from 2018 the traditional approach of buy and hold has not delivered the returns and the concept of uh, dynamic is, uh, asset management or money management has picked up very well i just want to share a small presentation with you and then i'll take some questions thanks let me just share the presentation is it visible to you guys hello the presentation is visible to you guys yes sir yeah that presentation was visible to you or, or not okay perfect so uh, as a firm we also talk about our own philosophy of being relevant how to keep us all of us relevant is very vital in it. okay let's coming back to the significance of dynamic style of money management in a very volatile environment okay when we talk about this environment perspective we also try to do very interesting work through a behavior finance route okay so we we talk about a predictive analytics tool through behavior finance so i'm just taking very simple example it will really help you to understanding what exactly we want to talk about okay so we all operate in market and we people talk about demand supply leads to a price movement okay but what leads to a demand supply it is a perception which leads to a demand supply and this perception is linked with the sentiments of the markets can we quantify these sentiments which what we reflect in our market through fear or greed okay and people talk about smaller things like leverage economy drives real economy today if you look at the leverage market is far bigger than the real economy today if you look at the global market or the global gdp is around close to 82 trillion dollars okay where the leverage economy as per isda is close to 1200 trillion dollars okay which means the leverage economy is 10 to 12 times what it means that leverage economy drives the real economy not other way okay 
similarly the concept of global liquidity is catching up and we have talked about very recently right from march when people turned very bearish about the global development due to pandemic and everybody talked about worried about what market will happen and suddenly you see a global surge of liquidity you will be surprised to know the concept of global liquidity the global liquidity is two times of the global gdp currently the current GD, current global liquidity is close to 152 trillion dollar and global liquidity is another concept which has replaced the uh, original concept of money supply which we measure through m1 m2 or sort of thing how the global liquidity is is capturing these things because of which incorporate the shadow banking also okay then we talk about some other behavior beta points how the earth changes is also affecting the economy you'll surprise to see even the magnetic fields affect the markets okay and these are the small thing which i'm just taking to part of my presentation okay so let let me spend a minute on the volatility analytics okay why we talk about the markets are going to be very volatile okay let me give you a perspective Okay, this is the graph I want to talk about. This is the simple graph of VIX of US market. Okay, and uh, we have been talking about from 2018, that 2018 till 2023 will be the most of the asset classes, global asset classes, the employed walls will remain elevated. It is very vital to understand because when we talk about that we operate in a particular environment and if the environment itself is going to be very, very volatile, that's for our predictive analytics tools we are talking about and we have seen the beginning of 2018 was extremely volatile and we have seen a massive wealth destruction phase coming to the Indian market and global market right from January 2018 and then we talked happened 2019 was partially better and again 2020 we saw a massive choppiness in the global market so if this is the case when we're talking about in 2018 till 2023 is going to be very volatile and this is the something we are presenting here through a quality band which is our proprietary knowledge we have built we also forecasted in 2007-8 crisis also so in the 2008 itself beginning of 2008 was talking about difficult 2008 and in august we released this report talking about wall expansion happening and we have seen that's the time the employed wall of wix was quoting around 21 percent and shot up to 102 percent we talked about nearly 75 percent so it's this is the background if this market is going to remain volatile your traditional tools and techniques which we use uh, by most of the global money managers are not very effective that's what i talked about that the phase of buy and hold strategy will not remain effective in such type of environment uh, with a small background also we are also looking we all know that we are all going through a global reset phase okay and we talk about global deglobalization sort of thing so right from early 2017 uh, january 2017 before trump took the oath we have been showcasing about how 2017 till 2047 will be a deglobalization phase is what we call it's a global reset phase okay and that reset phase is so vital for all of us to understand that the right from 1960 till 2017 early 2017 we were in the globalization phase okay and when the deglobalization phase start the actually exact reverse of this thing happened which can lead to good amount of inflation and we are talking about supply chain disruption so we have seen some of these things unfolding in the current environment why i'm talking about global reset we just to understand that because we all live in a uh, global environment and this global macro is very vital for to understand what it's indicating that we are heading to a massive inflation environment and most of the global strategists and economists are talking about low interest rate and low inflation for long so low for long is the thesis which has been playing out for a longer period of time right from post Lehman crisis because of the extraordinary liquidity which has been pumped by the central bank but our predictive analytic tools are indicating something very different we are talking about a scenario where commodity prices particularly agri prices relative to equity market globally even if i look at the inflation adjusted returns also in 2019 it was nearly 100 years low okay which means and that cycle is changing and, have, and with the earth analytics data points we talked about and other things also is endorsing that inflation is coming back if you re recollect beginning of 2020 nobody talked about rising commodity prices and you look at the commodity prices copper six year high how the food has moved up gold has moved up okay and agri commercial commodities in general are up 25 to 30 percent on average uh, price movement we have seen uh, on comics 
so this is the indication why we talk about global macro is very important to understand because uh, if inflation comes back with a bang which is our view from the second half of 2021 how it affects global market particularly us market let's let me give you some small example okay when we talk about uh, quantifying fear and greed okay when we talk about that we can quantify sentiments okay through our vlrt framework okay and, and in real life at advar mutual fund we are practicing these things so let me show you showcase something very interesting okay just look at the us market first because that's the one market which has gone to the roof nasdaq is making new highs on regular basis okay and people in india and globally are so excited despite pandemic also uh, markets are really flying high right now let's understand the behavior aspect when we talk about look so this is the very uh, behavior data which we have built on our us market as the snp uh, which is showcased in the black color okay and we have tried to showcase the behavior indicator uh, on the green color light green color okay it gives you some perspective when the whenever market falls sharply so you can see this spikes happening in the market this was like 2008 crisis which unfolded or what happened in 2016 or very recently in march 2020 20 it spiked okay so spike is a indication of some amount of panic which can lead to a buying opportunity but reverse is also true okay if you notice now the behavior indicator the quant behavior is, is now is approaching its 50 is rather it's at the 52 weeks low it's a lifetime low actually okay which means the global complacency if i have to measure us complacency is a lifetime low okay which means people are so complacent that this up move will continue whether Uh, president change uh, president uh, new president will take part pandemic happens or not happen as long there's a consensus of central bank liquidity is there uh, people are very very bullish okay we are getting first signs of disturbance okay when we talking about if complacency has hit lifetime low then it's a clear indication that next wave of volatility is coming back okay and this is my biggest fear in the current environment which we are looking at the mother of all exchanges us okay is showing signs of vulnerability okay and this is the space when people are very very complacent and the complacency indicators lifetime low clearly indicate that us volatility is going to rise okay and if that happens then you can really impact how choppiness can be there in global market and given the way which we are looking at the dollar index has one way corrected from 104 to nearly 90 so all emerging market has moved up if whatever reason even from a temporary basis also it reverses then you can see the volatility will come back to the global market including emerging market though over dollar index from a longer term perspective we think it is heading for new low in 3 years perspective but everything will not be a very linear move okay now let's 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 look at uh, these sentiments data which we are talking about through a, a nifty point of view or sensex point of view will be very interesting to showcase okay so beginning of january 2020 okay uh if you see this light pink color graph is the sensex perception index okay we try to showcase how this perception this is not the price graph in any manner is a perception data which we have created in our own uh, predictive analytics tool technique and you notice out here in on 14 january 2000 on the first week of january 2008 that is 8 january 2008 the greed was for the highest level in the history of uh, sensex what we are trying to showcase and then obviously in 2009 it collapsed significantly and then you see so at the beginning if you notice out there beginning of 2020 we we were approaching this upper band of greed okay this is the one of the key reason we became very very skeptical about market and we moved our portfolio towards low beta name defensive thing so it give you perspective you know how you, when you have to switch this is what we talking about the sector rotation or stock selection is based on some of the environment which you look which you look at right now the picture is slightly different but this was to, our greed parameter was just 2.5% lower than the 2008 high which is reason we were slightly cautious and that paid off in our performance later on now we look at the as of today where we stand this is the as of today okay so we are again approaching but we are still not closer to that level but definitely this is the time one has to be relatively more cautious the way we believe that global easy liquidity phase is over the difficult liquidity phase so liquidity we can remain high from a longer term perspective but the declining liquid momentum also has its own impact and the impact of liquidity analytics showcase that it takes 
sometimes six months to 12 months time also to see the impact of liquidity analytics. Let me show you one more data points. OK, so something similar if I want to talk about sentiments. So look at the sentiment data for uh, uh, Sensex. If you all recollect this, Harshad was the 1992 was the maniac phase. Look at the highest level of sentiments, positive sentiments were there in the market. And 2008, the Lehman crisis was the lowest in the history. Whatever data we have from, uh, we are trying to showcase the data in this chart from 79. We have data from 58. Okay. Uh, 2008 was another euphoric, but definitely this in phase was much lower than the Harshad phase of 1992. And then you saw 2020, which is the second lowest point in the history of Sensex. Okay. And so it, these data points really showcase whether we have reached a euphoria. Like in US, we are talking about euphoria is getting built, which is not the case in Indian market. So even let's say US market correct significantly also, uh, the impact will India will not be that meaningful. Okay, And gradually emerging market will give the background of dollar index and uh, other data points from a risk appetite perspective. We can get decoupled with that. Let me show you very interesting data uh, from these behavior aspects which you're talking about. Let's look at the risk appetite index. So risk appetite indicator is much leading indicator as compared to any other parameter which you use. Okay. So if you recollect in 2007, eight when market peaked out, the quant risk appetite index actually peaked out in end October 2007. This was here. And where market peaked out in January 2008. So it's another leading indicator. Similarly, if you recollect, Risk appetite indicator bottomed out in February 2009, which is visible out here, and market bottomed out in March end and started rallying from June, beginning June. And we have tried to superimpose a nifty small cap graph because risk appetite works actually much better than a small cap because the risk appetite is a clear reflection in the changes or the movement of small cap index. Okay, so is the classic example. Let's say. January 2008, we all know in the 2018 Indian market peaked out. Okay, and we have seen a massive correction since then. So the quant risk appetite indicator actually peaked out in December 2017, and later on the small cap Nifty small cap peaked out in January 2018, and bought and then then we have seen a sharp correction. Now look at what happened in the March 2020. The risk appetite was at 40 40 years low. Okay. And since then, risk appetite is rising. And then you see the March was the risk appetite bottom and June onwards, small cap started rallying. So again, a early sign. Okay. One of the key reason why we in our mutual fund portfolio from holding the cash, which most of the people are holding, we not only got fully invested by first week of April, we actually increase our exposure towards mid and small. I'm giving you this example so you get a perspective, you know. So when risk appetite is after touching a lifetime low and started rising with the with a sharp up move and this accompanied by rising global liquidity so risk appetite lifetime low and started inching up global equity 52 weeks high indian liquidity is also significantly high this is a lethal combination of a bull run okay and this exactly happened in the march and onwards the risk appetite started inching up sharply. Liquidity remained equally strong, and we have seen the big impact on the market. Okay, the good news is that the risk appetite, this data is as of last month, is a monthly data which we track, uh, has is still rising and still inching up. Whereas compared to U.S. market, has started drifting down. So is the case in developed market. So emerging market risk appetite is much better than the developed market risk appetite, as and India in particular. Okay, so. Another important question a lot of people ask on the perception point of view, you see the NASDAQ is making lifetime. How you measure this? Okay. So we all know technology bubble was there in 2000. Okay. Early 2000. So what we call it dot com bubble. But so we are trying to showcase a perception index on MSCI technology index. Okay. Why I have taken the MSCI technology index? Because it's a global index of all global companies. If I take the data only on NASDAQ, it's a small basket. Uh, from a global perspective and hence it makes sense to look at the much larger perspective so we generally like to look at the global market as a whole so msci tax index if i had to create a perception index is now approaching 2000 highs this was the high so it is a very very closer to that mark like how in january 2020 sensor was approaching the 
lifetime high of the perception index something similar is unfolding right now so it's also give you a perspective that this is a time one has to be cautious on the market okay and this lead to a a framework which we try to evolve okay what we call it's a vrt framework okay where we try to when i'm talking about dynamic way of money management okay this at our mutual fund we have implemented on the con mutual fund side platform how dynamic way of a predictive analytics tools is talk about so we look at the valuation as one third risk capitalized at one third and liquidity parameter at one third and all put together gives me a better timing tools okay so timing becomes very important in a dynamic way of money management we all have been hearing that one should not time the market but as a philosophy we want to showcase that the dynamic style of money management has the importance of timing okay and timing is not coming in isolation so you are talking about how perceptions can be quantified how risk appetite can be quantified how liquidity can be quantified and if you superimpose these data points on your valuation tools okay uh, your traditional style become a dynamic style of money management that's the way uh, the dynamic money management or dynamic asset management a lot of people talk about is changing and how black rocks of the world or vanguards of the world are changing and becoming from a traditional mutual fund house of product companies okay so coming back okay uh, this is a very uh, sub, uh, subject which is close to my heart and i can talk for length and we can showcase lot of stuff okay but given the uh, limitations on time so i thought just want to give you perspective so you will appreciate and understand that uh, while well, talking something is easy okay and we can talk about the now session is very open for any question answer happy to take that Uh, thank you so much, Sandeep sir, for the wonderful insights on asset allocation. I am sure this is interesting topic as you just shared. It's it's close to your heart. It I think it's close to many of us present here today, sir. So we have one question, sir. What expectations on equity market in near term up to March twenty twenty one? so uh, i will uh, draw some conclusion some of the graph which we have tried to showcase is that our worry is not about india okay our worry is also less about emerging market okay? uh, my personal perspective is that if i have to take a let's say next 3 years view okay then we are talking about the dollar index right from 104 we have showcased that it will heading towards 65 by 20 2023 which means from a currency perspective emerging market has potential to outperform developed market and we have seen the emerging market has underperform uh, in developed market in last one decade and that's a time has changed so long term perspective answer is good for india and emerging market but we all have connectivity with us market and, and being a mother of all exchanges if something goes wrong in us one has to be cautious so our parameters are showing some signs of vulnerability on us the complacency is very very high we are very very skeptic skeptical about us market and hence we like to remain slightly cautious okay as i said that global liquidity though it is reasonably high but uh, uh, the the momentum in global liquidity has started declining from the from july august onward and it has gathered momentum on that side and similarly risk appetite is also declining okay and valuations are relatively stretched so if i have to look at the combination of that then definitely we need to not be so complacent about us market and global markets in generally in general but i'll remain constructive on india I'll remain constructive on emerging market and even in the volatile environment even let's say us market correct so you be prepared for a choppiness till 2023 this choppiness will remain in the market and hence a dynamic way of manage money is much better it will generate better alpha as compared to your traditional buy and hold strategies so i think that answers well uh, the participant who has asked this 
uh sir i would uh, now like to thank you for uh, your time today and sharing yeah. wonderful insights on the asset allocation as we just rightly discussed once again so once again thank you for being present here and being our esteemed panelist and guest of honor thank you so much sir yeah thanks simple thanks viewers see you bye